Hey, what's going on guys? It's Pete with MixBetterNow.com and I'm really excited. We got a brand new product review for you today. We're going to be taking a look at the Spitfire Audio Symphonic String Library. Let's check it out. Okay, so Spitfire Audio is one of the leading uh, uh, manufacturers of orchestral libraries and audio samples. Uh, it's about as good as it gets, uh, probably the best you could buy, uh, the best that I've heard at least anyway. And they have three new libraries of very exciting orchestral instrumentation. Uh, they have the, uh, the Spitfire, uh, there's woodwinds, uh, there's brass, and the one we're gonna look at today is the symphonic strings. Absolutely incredible. Uh, it runs in contact player here, okay? Uh, we're going to pull that open in a second, but uh, just to preface that, uh, what I've done is I've gone ahead and uh, pulled together a little loop right here. I want you guys to hear um, what this sounds like in the context of other instruments. So uh, this is what the, the, the GUI looks like, uh, the interface, okay? Um, it installs in your uh, contact player library the same as any other uh, virtual instrument would. Um, what I'm doing here is I have a drum loop from Addictive Drums. I've gone and played a bass line. Uh, I have a pad from Output, and then um, using the uh, Spitfire Symphonic Strings here. Uh, I'm just playing some minor triads. Uh, I've got a delay behind it as well, um, and this is in the pizzicato articulation. So let's take a listen. <laughs> Now, if I put the delay repeats I had on. So as you can see, uh, it sounds really, really incredible, and it's very easy to achieve something like this inside of your productions. You don't need to be uh, a music major. You don't need to know music theory. You don't need to be a keys player. There's many ways to do that. Uh, so let's kind of jump in, and uh, we'll take a look around. All right, so to open up the interface, all we do here is go to our libraries. Now, uh, when we uh, click the drop down here, uh, you're going to see that we have a couple different options uh, right away. Uh, we have the uh, the first chair violins, second chair violins. We have violas, cellos, basses, and then there's a very cool um, ensembles option, which is what we're going to double click to open. Now, what the ensemble does is uh, that is going to uh, essentially pull up. Uh, let me make sure you can hear it. What it's going to do... is it's going to blend uh, um, the violins, the violas, the cellos, and the basses all together playing as an ensemble. It's a great way to sketch out ideas and to, to kind of compose, you know, if that's what you're into or if you want to um, uh, use the strings as a means of uh, uh, supplementing other uh, uh, instruments, you know, in a production, in a mix. It's a great way. So as you can see, we get this little help bubble that pops up here, and this is going to be a common theme. So what's great about Spitfire is they have the, these help bubbles, and you'll see these little, uh, the little eye in the circle uh, for information and you can click on uh, on these different sections here you'll see these pop up even when you hover your mouse over and it's great because they really go through great lengths to explain what each um, each feature is in the interface for you so you don't really have to have much prior knowledge to to get up and running with this the interface is so simply laid out very easy to use uh, sounds fantastic all you have to do is double click and right away I mean, you're up and running, you're hearing sound um, all through the MIDI controller, um, you know, and it's that easy. So just a couple things I want to touch on real quick. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, the SSS, the S3, whatever you want to call it, the Spitfire Symphonic Strings Collection um, is basically it's, it's, it's Spitfire's flagship product that sums up the foundation of their approach to sampling, which is just second to none. Um, this is one of my favorite things about this product is that the strings were recorded at the legendary Air Studios in London. Now, Air Studios uh, was Sir George Martin's studio, right? The fifth Beatle, the Beatles uh, a legendary producer. That's his personal studio that he built for himself. I know Air Studios has played host to scores uh, from blockbusters that have grossed billions with the same players playing the same instruments that are in this virtual instrument. It's 
kind of a mind blowing thing when you think that you have that at your fingertips, you know, in your project studio, in your home studio, wherever you are on your laptop, on a plane. Um, it's not a cheap virtual instrument, but it is worth every penny when you take all of those things into account. I mean, they really have spared no expense here putting this together. The uh, the symphonic uh, 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 strings includes an amazing 60 star players. So they've taken the best string players uh, you know, from Europe, uh, assemble them together in the studio. You have 16 first chair violins, 14 second chair violins, 12 violas, 10 cellos, eight basses. Uh, th the whole thing is sampled with over 175 articulations. Um, just so you know what I mean when I say articulations, uh, these are the different settings down here. As you can see, it defaults to long, which is this. Another articulation would be pizzicato which is kind of plucking the strings. Um, okay. Um, so these are our articulations and there's many of them and there's all kinds of different combinations we can use. Um, one of my favorite, favorite things about this is uh, we have three different microphones and mic positions that we can use uh, any way that we want. We can blend them together and we also have a... Um, uh, a close and a far mic where we can actually move. <clears throat> it kind of emulates like, like think about if you're uh, 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 sat in an audience and you know, you're, you're a certain distance from the stage. Well, if we, we move this fader right here, uh, you know, far or close, um, it, it actually simulates sitting closer uh, to the orchestra or moving farther back. It's, it's really amazing. Um, the three different mic uh, uh, placement or the three different mic options, uh, it's CTA, C, uh, C stands for, say that five times fast, C stands for close mic, okay, T stands for tree mic, which is a multiple microphone configuration, and uh, A is your ambient miking, so it'll be more of like a room mic effect. Think of something you might be more accustomed to might be uh, uh, drum room mics. It's a very, very similar effect to that. And, you know, in addition to each individual selection, there's also a comprehensive selection of articulations and techniques presented in this very ensemble format that we have up right now, which is fantastic for sketching and composing out of the box whatever, you know, whatever you're trying to compose or produce or add to your music, it can be done. So, uh, let's start getting into some sounds here. I got my keyboard in front of me. All right. And, um, I mean, it just sounds absolutely incredible. So um, we'll stay in the ensemble for a little bit. Then I'll show you what the violins, the violas, the cello, the basses sound like, and uh, we'll cruise around. So the interface, very, very easy. We are on the long articulation. So the articulations are all along the bottom here. Uh, I'll let you hear what the rest of them sound like. So if we come over here to the long CS. Just, just absolutely beautiful. Uh, here we're going to have our spiccato setting. So spiccato is kind of a shorter uh, bow movement on um, on the strings, right? So I'm just pressing and holding this once, and this is what you're going to hear. Right? Now if I go back to the long and just hold it, you're going to hear... Okay, so... Um, with the uh, with the spiccato setting, you get a really nice uh, uh, al alternative articulation. Just sounds fantastic. Here's our, uh, our pizzicato. Now the pizzicato is what I used uh, in this loop here that I threw together real quick. It's it's it, it's amazing. Uh, I, I really can't get over how good it sounds. And I like I have quite quite a few. Uh, I love strings. I love putting strings on things. And I have a lot of string libraries. And this is I, you know no one's paying me to say this. Nothing. This is the best string library I've ever heard. Uh, coming over here, we have our Caleno. Okay. 
Okay, so that's kind of a more muted kind of picking sound. Uh, here we're gonna have our tremolo. This is great. So I'm just holding again one finger, one key. So it's 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 a it's a simulated very fast bow movement. You know, you think of tremolo. If you're a guitar player, you're familiar with tremolo. You might have tremolo on your amp. You might have a tremolo pedal. Um, it is a it's a volume effect, right? Tremolo is if you take your volume knob on your guitar and you move it. That's essentially what tremolo is. And then we have our trills. We have a minor second trill. I'm sure you've heard that in many a, a film score, many a movie, uh, many a symphony. Uh, and then we have our major second, which is going to give a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a happier sound as opposed to the minor. Um, and, and this is the same across the board with all of the selections, with the first chair violins, the second, uh, the violas, the 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 cello, uh, the basses. So um, coming over here to the easy mix, uh, close far mic. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the long and uh, let's go down an octave. So let's come up close and you'll see this actually moving here, the seating, which is kind of cool. Um, you're going to see stuff load and it's going to take a little while. This is definitely a little bit of a CPU intensive program, but it kind of has to be to sound this good. I mean, you have to have something producing that sound. So I, I don't mind that at all. Uh, here's the close mic. Okay. That's as close as we can get. Let's go as far as we can get. I don't know, you know, if I would tend to lean towards one or the other. It just depends on whatever you're you're working in, what the project calls for. It's just great to have that functionality there. Uh, let's go ahead and put this back in the middle. So if we stay on the uh, the ensemble section here, uh, we can go ahead and click on this little wrench. This is going to bring us to our um, uh, settings menu, if uh, if you will. Uh, and again, we have more of these little. Um, uh, eye boxes that that pop up the um, you know these help menus so you don't really have to know much about like I said music theory uh, uh, you know string composition anything like that um, they have you per Spitfire has you really well covered in terms of uh, you know these little help tabs which you can certainly uh, use to your advantage now in the settings menu is where we can tweak with the different microphone sounds and the different mic placement. So uh, as you can see the CTA, close, tree, and ambient. Um, when the, you pull this all the way down, it'll disengage the microphone. So you can see that this is off. If I bring this back up, you'll see the the um, the, the black box uh, turn um, turn on. And uh, you can sort of play with them, listen to what they sound like. So let's go ahead and bypass the close and let's just listen to the tree. That's probably my favorite one. Uh, let's bring in some of this close mic here just to give it a little bit more substance. And if you listen to the release, uh, the decay time, it's just, it's so natural to that room, the live room in Air Studios. 
Really amazing. Uh, we'll bring in some of the ambient miking here. We'll bring a little more of the close in. We'll bring a little ambience in. This will give us some more sense of depth. <laughs> So any combination that um, sort of, you know, kind of hits the spot for whatever you're putting these strings on, you know, you can certainly do that. Uh, let's listen to the ambient mic by itself all the way up. So if we listen, when I let go of the keys... It's got a much more, uh, a longer tail, a longer reverb tail, and a longer decay time because it at physically takes longer for the sound to go back and forth to the microphone that they have set up. So just fantastic. Um, let's cruise over and check out a different uh, uh, instrument, if you will. Uh, now we can toggle back and forth with this left and right arrow here uh, where you see it saying ensembles, but I'm gonna just gonna X out of this. So um, we start fresh. We'll go to the first chair violins. All the settings are the same on the interface here, okay? So all of our articulations are the same. It's just that it's just one instrument now. We're going to hear the first seat violins as opposed to the uh, ensemble of all the strings together. And uh, let's check it out. <laughs> it just sounds so good. classic violin sound with this. Just beautiful. Um, let's check out the second seat violins. Doesn't go down that low. We'll go up an octave. fantastic um let's listen to some spiccato So beautiful. Uh, pizzicato. Let's listen to some of the cellos. These are some of my favorite. The cellos just sound insane. I love putting cellos on things like acoustic productions where you might have an acoustic guitar, one or two vocalists, and a piano. I mean, that. I kind of call that like the holy trinity, you know, uh, acoustic guitar, piano, and cello. Just fantastic. I'm a big Damien Rice fan. Uh, Damien Rice's O oh is one of my favorite records of all time. Just amazing. down an octave.
I mean, the way the lo- the the low end on these strings is to die for. Let's check out um, uh, some spiccato here. sit here and play this stuff all day uh one more thing i want to show you uh before we wrap it up and that is we just have a couple more controls up here dynamics vibrato speed uh and expression we can assign any of these to our modulation wheel uh or your mod wheel on your midi controller you know it's just outstanding and uh you know it's very easy to use and the the bottom line is these are the best sounding strings i've ever heard all right, so this has been a, a little bit of an overview and a walkthrough of the fantastic uh, Spitfire Audio Symphonic Strings. I can't sing uh, uh, its praises enough. I think it's the best sounding strings I've ever heard, as I've said before. Um, it is a bit pricey. Go check it out at SpitfireAudio.com, but I think it's fully worth it. Um, you know, if you're a producer or a um, composer who who you know, like strings on your, uh, on your productions, on your arrangement. This one is a no brainer. It's an absolute winner. And, uh, you know, just, uh, uh, you know, demo it, check it out. And what's great about all the stuff is it's downloadable straight from the website. So you don't need to get any little hard drive sent here or anything like that. All right. So I appreciate you guys watching as always. I hope you have an awesome day. Uh, I hope you guys have a very, very happy holiday season and I will catch you next time.